Hey everybody, welcome back to another fantastic episode of Ready to Die Fighting. I'm Chris, and I wanted to do an update on the video um, on storing foods in Mylar bags. Because I uh, got some new bags. I ran out of the other ones, filled up them, and then I ordered some different ones. And I got these off of Amazon. S6. X well pizza bag and these are way better. I like these a lot. It says on here BPA free, 100% food grade, smell proof, waterproof, light proof, puncture resistant. SHX well mylar bags provide a lightweight but durable and flexible solution for storing food. Blah 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 blah. Uh, PET that's polyethylene terephthalate plus aluminum foil. Plus polyethylene, the most inner area is polyethylene, which is perfectly suitable for packaging foods. Um, they can be heat sealed with, with an impulse heat sealer or use a clothing iron, hair straightener. <clears throat> and what I liked about these, even though they cost a little bit more than the other ones that I was buying, they are much thicker. The others, if I held them up to the light, I could kind of... I can see through them a bit. These, um, I'm not sure on the thickness of them, I don't remember, but I can't see through that at all when I hold it up to the light. The others, I could. Additionally, it's um, gusseted, so it will stand up on its own, which makes it a lot easier to fill up. And lastly, it's got a Ziploc up at the top, and it's a solid Ziploc. Um, I don't use it for long term, like I still seal it, this top part here, but having that Ziploc makes it so that one, it's resealable once you open it, which is nice, I realize I'm off screen, uh, but also it makes it a lot easier to squeeze the excess air out, which was, I was able to do it with the others, but it was a little... It was a little bit trickier. So uh, with this, I can just kind of squeeze it, zip it tight, and then I go through with uh, my this guy and reseal it. And so I've got a bunch of stuff here that's ready to go, but I'm just going to seal them all at once. Um, additionally, I picked up, which I don't think I had them when I made the first video, is these guys. If I did have them, I, I don't remember. I didn't have them initially when I first started doing this. Um, and this is these uh, silica packets, and they absorb moisture. So in addition to having the oxygen absorbers, I've been putting these silica packets in as well. So we're taking away the moisture, we're taking away the ox oxygen, and food and things in general. What causes them to spoil and decay is exposure to oxygen, Exposure to heat, exposure to light, and exposure to moisture. If you take away those four things, things last a really long time. So with these bags, uh, we are eliminating light, especially since they're also going into a crate after that. Um, <clears throat> with these, we're eliminating moisture, keeping it away from a heat source, so you know, that's an easy part. And then with the oxygen absorbers, which are right here, we're getting rid of the oxygen. So, by those forces combined, food should last a really long time. And I've been doing more research, um, and as best I can tell, everything that I've read about, you know, I, I look up everything before I try to store it long term, but basically any shelf-stable dry food that doesn't have like a high oil content, you can store like this, and it'll last a long time. So cornflakes should be fine. Things like nuts, they do have a lot of oil in them. Oil can go rancid, um, so you can't really do those. Things like raisins, they are dried, but they're not completely dry. They still have some moisture in there. So they'll last maybe a while, but not super long term. Um, but something like cornflakes, uh, yeah, there's... This is very, very dry. There's no, uh, where's the English version? Yeah, it's got zero fat. 
So there's nothing in here that's going to go red. Red. It's just you know cornflour and barbecue sugar. And even though I was a little bit awkward with that, <laughs> it's still easier than um, without the gusset there. Oh, you know, I forgot to write what it is on here. I'll have to do that still. So. And then I throw the uh, silica packet in there. And I usually just put it closed just like that temporarily while I bag everything else up. And there are 10 <coughs> oxygen absorbers in this package. So I try to do them in like batches of 10 so that I don't have to try to seal these back up. It's a little, just a little peace of mind. Like they don't absorb oxygen super fast. Like you don't have to worry as you're doing it. But if I have like a couple left over, I try to put them in something airtight to try to make sure they still stay good. It does seem to be effective. I put them in a, the smallest mason jar I can find. Uh, Ziploc bags don't really work. Um, I probably could just va re vacuum seal this now that I think about it. Um, but I just try to do it in multiples of 10 or batches of 10. It just makes my life a little bit easier and I don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to write on here cornflakes. And the month and date. Month and year, sorry. And now. And so actually, I think I have 11 here. One, two, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, is that 10? Look at me go. I thought I had two. Four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, perfect. All right, so now I'm just going to open all these little babies up. And uh, like I said, it makes a really nice seal here. And those, I have a pretty decent amount of confidence that this is going to stay closed. And <clears throat> with the other bags, I made a pretty big seal like I would seal off like basically all the free space to make as big of a seal as possible um, just to make sure there's no leaks they recommended i think in the directions like two inches however with this one since there's a ziploc in addition to the seal they only give you like this much space um that's not two inches that's maybe one inch i feel like since there's a ziploc there it's probably fine That's my assumption, anyways. So we got a lot of different things here. We got some um, some grits, which I don't like. But, uh, um, <clears throat> I got a lot of this food from the food pantry because why not? Especially after moths got into so much of my food and I needed to replace a lot of it quickly. Also, I'm poor. Um, <clears throat> so the grits they gave me is not something I'd normally buy, but you know, in a pinch, maybe we'll eat them. Maybe the boy likes them. I don't know. I've never made them for him, so. There you go. Um, some white rice, which we do eat. I prefer brown, but brown has a lot of oil in it, so you can't really store it for a super long time. And so I just squeeze out as much air as I can and seal it off like that. And that will hold. So I in here. Squeeze out as much air as I can. Get it over itself if I have to. And then zip lock it shut.
And then you take this guy and just seal off the top here. And I've just been doing this top portion so that when and if I ever have to dip into this, um, <clears throat> I can just use the bag to keep them in. See how it's nice and sealed there. And this is this is thick. It's much thicker than the other ones. And um, it's got the perforation there, so you can just tear it open easily. And then I can just re. Oh, it looks like that wasn't. Maybe it came loose. Um, <clears throat> and then reseal it. This one goes. No, maybe when I heated it up, it didn't. So I'll do that again. And um, <clears throat> the oxygen absorber, they work slowly. So like overnight, this will shrink down. And it sometimes it does look really tight, like a vacuum seal. It kind of just seems like it depends. Sometimes it just shrinks a little bit. But either way, um, by tomorrow, that'll be a nice tight little bag. Or at least it's supposed to be. All right, so I'm not going to do this 10 times on camera, but you see how it goes. If you have any questions or suggestions, um, please leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.